Hello and welcome into Versus Podcast. My name is Matt and I am joined by the fan favorite Devin, Ed Sheeran, I mean Garrett, and lastly, Mr. Smiles himself, Caleb. <laughs> Let's start with the viewers. Favorite, Devin, how are you doing? Why Why do you say I'm the favorite, man? We keep on, I keep on feeling confident with Garrett and I going at you. I'm feeling great. And then I see these comments that just happened on the video that we posted. And everyone's loving on, on uh, Devin's takes right now. And I, I just, hey, I don't know. What can I say? I ride for my dogs and they ride for me. <laughs> well, let's head over to Ed Sheeran. Garrett, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, Devin is the king of corny quotes. Um, that was another corny quote by Devin. Um, but, yeah, I'm doing good. I went and saw a movie tonight. went and saw Nope. It was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I've heard, I I've heard mixed reviews. People so. go out and see it. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely kind of like a niche niche kind of group that would enjoy it i i I found it fascinating but yeah other than that nothing better than a friday night doing nothing just podcasting with the boys you know there we go we love it and let's head to mr smiles or should i call him mr mr buff his uh shoulders are looking pretty big right there in the pink shirt caleb how are we doing thank you i've been working on it boys (laughs) uh i'm doing great it was a great week i'm happy it's the weekends um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to be playing 18 holes tomorrow, so that'll be good. You know, hopefully I can shoot a good score, but yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to be over back. under, what? over under 92. For oh, oh, shoot. Over oh, under. Over, definitely over 92. <laughs> I'm going to go over 92 because hey. when K- Caleb and I played, I- I'm not very good at golf and uh, we only played, we only played nine holes though, but when we played, uh, it was, it was not going well for Caleb. So, he, he, oh, hey, hey he still beat me, but I'm very bad. So, playing so bad. Hey, I'll, Gary, I'll give you this under 100. Okay. Oh, I'll hold go. you to it. I'll hold you to <laughs> it. Again. But other than that, I wasn't on the last podcast, so it's good to be back, boys. There we go. All right. Well, tonight we will be diving into the AFC South, but first, if y'all could please like this video and subscribe if you are new or haven't subscribed. We would greatly appreciate that. Um, let's just dive right into the AFC South. Uh, I set out a Q&A, only got one response. But with that said, we'll be doing it for the rest of the division. So be, make sure to be following our Instagram uh, if you have any questions that uh, you would like answered about any of the other divisions. So um, let's start out with the one question that we got was from my friend Luke Webb. Shout out Luke Webb. Hope all is going well with you, man. Uh, but Luke asks us, will Christian Kirk be worth the money in Jacksonville? Devin, what do you think? I don't think he's going to be worth the money, but I mean, he's going to he's gonna contribute pretty well. I mean, he, he was solid for the Cardinals. So him being wide, wide, wide receiver one for the Jags, obviously. I don't know who else Trevor is going to throw to wide receiver wise. So he's going to contribute and be a big factor in their uh, – their passing game, but worth the money? No, he did not deserve that money. He completely obliterated the wide receiver market. And honestly, he might be the reason Devontae's not with us anymore. I'm just kidding. That's not true. <laughs> That's just me venting. But well, no, I don't think he's going to be worth it. Well, for anyone that does not know, he uh, signed a four-year, $72 million deal with the Jaguars this year. I went ahead and looked up um, based off of the, like per year average. I just wanted to look, he is being paid 16th best at $18 million a year over guys like Tyler Lockett, Mike Evans, Robert Wood, Woods, Hunter Renfro, and the list goes on and on. So with that said, Garrett, what do you, what do you think about it? Um. I'm happy for Christian Kirk, man. He's he's rolling in the dough, you know, living in Jacksonville, no no state income tax, I believe. So <laughs> he'll be swimming in it. Um, as for the Jaguars, I think it's like a, he's a solid receiver. I don't really see anything wrong with a pickup of 
Christian Kirk, will he be worth the money? I guess only time will tell. But I, I like Christian Kirk. I think he's solid. I think, um, you know, Trevor Lawrence is – it's good to get a new receiver in his second year so they can develop a connection, you know. So <clears throat> hopefully that relationship can flourish and they can be successful. But, you know, a little a little too much money. But good job, Christian Kirk. You, you finessed. Caleb, we know that you have spent your time watching Christian Kirk develop into the wide receiver he is today. So what are your thoughts, um, biased aside from him leaving the Cardinals? What do you think of the deal? Yeah, I mean, honestly, me personally, I love Christian Kirk. I think he's a great dude. He's a great locker room guy. I'm happy for him. I mean, I'm going to give him I'm going to give him a round of applause for getting that money. That's um, that's that's a huge deal. But I mean, he wasn't I don't think he was worth the money. I mean, he they paid them way too too much. But I mean, yeah, I mean, he did produce a lot at the Cardinals, but he was also like a two or a three. So you remember when you when you got like ones and twos guarding D hop and then um well I guess he was more of a two when you got their best their best corner guarding D hop. You know, it's a little easier to produce as a wide receiver too. But I'm curious to see how he's gonna be in the wide receiver role. So we'll have to see how it goes. But congrats to Christian Kirk. I, I'm I'm happy for him. I'm happy for my boy. Hey, just like we said with John Wall, congrats on getting your money. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. that's all you got to say. I, I'm not blaming this one on Christian Kirk. I don't think that <laughs> Christian Kirk is definitely not worth that money. I think that he is a, a solid number two option. I mean, if you're really competing, you probably want him as your third option, to be honest with you. But, I mean, when you were saying about D-Hop, he wasn't getting as much. When D-Hop went down, like – our offense was nothing. And I get that that's the play calling with Cliff, but also I just don't think that Christian Kirk is that number one guy for you. But with that said, just like you guys, I mean, he'd be silly not to take the money. And as a Cardinals fan, I was happy to see him leave if that's the money that he's going to get, because um, that is not some type of money that I personally would want my team to be paying for Christian Kirk. But let's go over to the Jaguars as a whole now. And Garrett, I want to start with you. Um, do you think that uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to ta- take a big step and take the Jaguars a step forward in his second year? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I hope I would hope so. I think you could kind of watch his progression and see him get more comfortable as the season went along because um, it kind of had like a slow start. I don't know if that was attributed to their coach or not, but I think um, – I think I think he'll be a lot more improved, just getting more comfortable within an offense. You know, they kind of had to switch switch an offense in the middle of season. But I, I, I hope he I hope he's better. He's got a little more little more weapons now. He get he's got his boy ETN back with him. So I'm sure that gives him a lot of more incentive to do well. So yeah, I think I think he'll do more. Do do a lot better. Caleb. Yeah, I think they'll make a a bigger step. I mean Fire, I mean, firing, oh, who is their coach? Uh, Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah, Urban Meyer. I was like, why couldn't I think of that? Firing Urban Meyer was definitely a big thing. They were awful. But I think hiring the right guy for Trevor Lawrence, um, I think Doug Peterson could can be that guy. Um, I think he's solid at developing young quarterbacks. So hopefully that quarterback, offensive coordinator, slash head coach duo will be good. But – yeah, I think they'll be better. I mean, they won't the playoffs and they won't win the division, but I think they'll be a little closer to 500 than they were last year. So, close to 500? Well, I mean, they'll still have a losing record, but like they'll be closer to 500. Like they'll have more wins than last year. That's what I meant. Gotcha. Devin, yeah. what do you think? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of of Trevor Lawrence. But with that being said, I don't think it's more of a, a him issue. I think it's the situation he's in. I think I, I think it's gonna be a little better. Obviously he gets like Gary said, ETN back. Um Christian Kirk's gonna help out a bunch. New coach. So I mean I think he's gonna be a little bit better. 
but I'm not I'm not a big believer in him. I think he's still got a little bit to go. Um, but I do have them, like Caleb said, be, um, doing a little better, and I think we're going to see a little improvement. What do you think? What do you think he has to prove to you? What so, he doesn't have to prove anything to me. Like for for like for you to believe in him, like you said, you're not a believer. I mean, so. let's. He played terrible last year. Did he? He did. He played really bad. But I, I don't think it was necessarily his fault. I mean, I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> like, I, I will. Yeah. I will. I will do my research. But I think there's a stat that I that can back me up here. But I I will come back with that stat. Man, you just love to go against that. Yeah. I don't. Devin. I'm just saying. I Any just take want, I, I just... say, this man is coming at my throat. No, Devin, we agree on so much. Trevor Lawrence just... was not good last year. I wasn't saying he was, but good. it's not like I'm just saying his his situation was not the best, and no, his receivers I, I were that. not I the best. That, though I said that. See, here's yeah. my thing. Here's my thing: is I I feel like we've we've talked about the Jets so far, and I wouldn't say that people are like saying yes, Zach Wilson's going to have a better year, but people are like, oh, Zach Wilson finally has people like he'll do well. And I, I, I don't get why they're not the same with Trevor Lawrence because I personally think that Trevor Lawrence is tremendously better talent than yeah. Zach Wilson is. And yeah. I think that – I think – I'll die on this hill, but I still think that Trevor Lawrence will be the best quarterback in that draft class. And I think that he has the talent to – I'm not saying that he will be, but that he could be a top 10, 15 quarterback down the line if given the weapons that's needed. But I think that he can be – that that good of a guy I just I just think that he is that guy I think that he will help this team I think that Christian Kirk being there is helpful obviously way more than it is last year and I mean Travis Etienne was a freak in college I can't wait to see them two play together again I can't wait to see him um play play again it's it's going to be good to see it that to happen so um the Jaguars will definitely be a different an interesting team to watch It'll be yeah. interesting seeing how they work James Robinson and Travis Etienne together. Because wait, didn't James Robinson hurt himself? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, maybe he he's feel like he's always hurt, but I don't I don't think he's hurt at the moment. I can look though here. He had an Achilles injury, and it says he. What I'm seeing is that he's saying he's not trying to rush back. Okay, but that okay. he has an Achilles injury. He, oh, yeah. he, was, he was on my week, week six, last week no. 16 last year. He, he heard his Achilles, but um, any last thoughts on the Jaguars before we move on? Nope. All right, let's Hopefully. move on. Let's move on over to the Houston Texans. Um, this team has had a lot of uh, uncertainty through the off season. Uh, not for the best reason regarding their last quarterback, but they're hoping to move on from that. And um I wanted to start with Devin. Do you think that Davis Mills can be the guy for the Houston Texans, or is he just there for now? Uh, I think he's just there for now, but, I mean, I, I like him a lot. He he was solid last year. There was a couple games where he really impressed, but I don't think he's that guy, um, if that's what you're asking me. I think he's going get him, to get him a few wins here and there, but – not a long-term guy, more of a short-term. Um, and that's all I really – I don't know. David Mills, I just don't see him being a, that guy for, like, the Texans or any type of team. So, they'll probably load up another QB in the draft or some t- something down the line soon. But I hope I hope he plays really well. I mean, he yeah. seems like a chill dude. Yeah, I see, I see him as a good, like, a solid backup for a long time. Yeah. I feel like he can come in and like you know handle the situation pretty well. Plus, he's got that thing. He's got the longest neck I've ever seen, um, which you know helps a little bit. But I think, um, yeah, I think the Texans and and Davis Mills are like trending in the right direction. Um, they still have Brandon Cooks, if I'm mm-hmm. not wrong. So yeah. he's he's probably he's he's probably one of the most underrated wide receivers in the league, just because he's you know on the Texans. Um, but yeah, I think I think Davis Mills can you know manage games pretty well enough to give him a give him a solid season. Um, I don't know if what they're gonna do at the trade deadline. See if they make any moves or what anybody's QB situation is. Maybe they go get Sam Darnold or something like that. But um, 
yeah, I, I like Davis Mills. I just don't I don't see him um but I don't see the longevity with the Texans. Yeah, as a starter. Caleb, what do you think? Um I think they're going to be terrible. <laughs> I'm going to say it right now. I don't think he's the guy at all. I think he's just a random dude they put in the quarterback <laughs> position just to fill it and just to say, hey, we have a quarterback. I think they're going to be terrible. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL next year. You think but, the Jags are going to be better than them? Oh, that's a good question. Yes, I think the Jags will be better. Just because Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence, if he has the right coaching around him, I think he could – I think he can give the Jags a couple more wins than the Texans. But Doug Peterson's their coach right now, now right? The Jags? Wait, yeah, Doug Peterson. Yeah, Doug Peterson's a I Jags. Think that's a, I think that's a good thing for Trevor Lawrence. But, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's a good thing, too. But, yeah, I I don't – I'm not a Davis Mills believer. I don't think they'll be any good at all. So, that's yeah. my thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm kind of the same as you guys. Uh I'm a little more with Devin Gear. I think that he's decent. I think he can be a good backup. Uh, I don't think – I think it's going to be about the same year, about four or five wins, same as last season, in my yeah. opinion. But let's go over to uh, two of the teams that are a little more interesting in this division, and that's the Colts. First, let's go with the Colts, who traded away Carson Wentz this offseason and then uh, went around and traded for Matt Ryan. Uh, the question that I have for us is, does Matt Ryan make the Colts a playoff team? Um, I'll kind of start this off. I think that the AFC is too loaded for them. I think that they'll be kind of the team that misses out right at the end, not because of a collapse to the Jacksonville Jaguars this year, but just because I think that they'll miss just out. I think they'll be competing for the division all year and come up just short, and that's why they don't make uh, the playoffs. But I think that Matt Ryan makes this a better team because he's a way better quarterback than Carson Wentz. And I think that it'll be – an interesting team to see and we'll see if they stick with Matt Ryan for more than one year since they haven't had a quarterback for more than one year in a long time but um Deb you're shaking your head yes so let's let's hear it why do you think the Colts are a playoff team with them I love it I think they easily win the division I I won't I won't get into the record um yet I know we do that later but I, I love the addition of Matt Ryan I think that he's gonna bring that team to new heights I mean they already have an insane defense with Leonard um, Jonathan Taylor, Shaquille Leonard, East. Shaquille Leonard. He changed his name. Yeah, it's, actually, not, it's not. It's not Darius anymore. It's Shaquille. Really Jeez. interesting. Dar- Darius was so much cooler. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I like the team a lot, man. I think they have a lot of potential. I think Matt Ryan is still a decent QB. I know he's out of his prime in the Falcon days, but. I mean, he wasn't working with much over there in Atlanta the past few seasons anyway, so it's been kind of hard for him to be himself. Obviously, he's still a little washed up, but I like him a lot. I think they easily win the division, and I don't know if I see them making a splash in the playoffs necessarily, but uh, I like him. Yeah, Matt Ryan is probably one of the most underappreciated quarterbacks of all time um, for what he had to deal with with the Falcons and what he only got maybe two or three years where they could have made a run in the playoffs. And obviously the meltdown in the Super Bowl was unfortunate for him. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the Colts made the right decision to get Carson Wentz out of there. I don't think he was the consistent QB that they're looking for. Um, it just seems, I don't know. The Colts are weird for me these past three years with the three different QBs that they've had. They're all like older except for Carson Wentz, I guess, but they're kind of like older QBs that are falling out of their prime. Like Phillip Rivers played his last year with the Colts. I mean, they got to the playoffs, but I mean, it wasn't like they were going to go far. Um, but yeah, I, I hope, I hope Matt Ryan can, you know, bring some success. You know, all he has to do is turn around and hand it off to Jonathan Taylor. So not too hard. Yeah. Caleb. Yeah, I think I like it. I like it. I like I like the move. I think I think he'll be better than Carson Wentz. I think he makes your team better. Do they win the division? That's tricky because you got Tennessee, but he did lose AJ Brown and they did lose a couple of off offensive weapons. So, but they also still have Derrick Henry. But 
I don't know who's going to win that division. I think it will be either Tennessee or Colts, but I think Matt Ryan can definitely give them a wild card shot. I think if they don't win the division, I think they'll definitely make the wild card because they have the defense. They have Jonathan Taylor. I mean, they have, they have Matt Ryan. Yeah, I think they'll be a wild card team if they don't win the division. So they'll make the playoffs no matter what. That's what I said. All right. Lastly, let's uh, get into the division champs of last year. Uh, let's go through this. Um, let's go. They uh, The Titans, they um, lose A.J. Brown, but we'll have Derrick Henry back for a full season. Are the Titans the favorite in the division again? Can they be a top seed in the AFC again this year? Caleb, let's start with you. Um, um, I mean, like I said earlier, it's tough. It's tough because the okay the the did Tennessee lose or gain anyone on defense? Do you guys know anything? I don't know defensively to be honest. They got oh uh, man, I feel like they got a new linebacker. I forget, I forget though. Um, I I feel like the only like significant moves that were on the offensive side. Yeah, and they I feel like they lost for those moves. Yeah. It's debatable. I mean, obviously, A.J. Brown's, like, a, a really good receiver. But when you think about, like, the future, it was the right move. I mean, the, it was just a bad situation altogether and for him to be in Tennessee. Like, I, there's no way he was going to get the amount of money that they that he wanted. So, I, I feel like they made the right move to get, uh, trade him. Who would they get a receiver? They got Traylon Burks, which I oh, really I, like Traylon Burks. Right. I forgot about that. That guy's a stud. Um. And Robert I'll Woods. Go I'll go Tennessee just because, yeah, I, I'll go Tennessee on this. I, I don't really have a big explanation. It's mainly just gut feeling. <laughs> so that's my feeling yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, going, go, going into it, Garrett, what do you think? Um, I, like, I like the Titans a lot. Um, I, see, I see them at, uh, winning the division as well. Um, by a close margin, but I, I still th- I still think they pull it out. Um, as long as Derrick Henry can stay healthy, I feel like if Derrick Henry stayed healthy, they would have ran away with the division last year. But um, if Derrick Henry can stay healthy, I think Brian Tannehill is the guy in Tennessee. I feel like he's he's not his best at times, but I feel like he's a lot better than people give him credit for. Um, but yeah, I, I I like um I like Tennessee to to win the division. Dev? Yeah. Um I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm too big of a believer in the Colts. I think the Colts are gonna win the division. I actually I don't know, I'm not I'm not a I'm not locked in the Titans to be honest. I don't I think they'll be um fighting for that wild card spot at the end of the year for the playoffs. So it'll be interesting. Well, we're going into our last segment where we're going to go ahead and talk about our predictions for the AFC South, but we are happy to say that the whole versus podcast team is now here as Trey has joined us. Trey, how are you doing? Dude, I'm doing good. I miss you boys. I can't wait to be back in AZ and get like a solid dap up real fast. I miss all y'all. That's honestly one of the things I'm looking forward to most. Hey, the the in person ones. I just can't wait to see Devin and Garrett go at it in person. It's gonna be a thing. This it's gonna be masterpiece, <laughs> absolute masterpiece. That um, you guys are gonna, yeah. you guys, you yeah. guys are gonna argue about everything. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I don't even start Trey, the arguments. That's the stupid thing. Oh my god, this dude I just not upset him at my throat, man. All right, you uh, two chill. All you. right, Trey, how about you start us off with your AFC South predictions? If you want to add anything else in, since you weren't in the last. Uh, segment you're able to as well but let's hear it yeah for sure boys um I got I don't know I, I don't think very highly of this of this division I think they're like pretty mediocre pretty mid um I got the Titans 10 and 7 right I think I think playoff team um I think they'll be solid I don't think they're gonna go anywhere too crazy uh, I got Colts 9 and 8 I honestly I think the Colts are a better team than the Titans but they already have injuries uh Darius Leonard's already out um and a couple of offensive linemen, and I just – who knows with the injuries, and they have been injured from the past. Jaguars, I think they progress, but I think they're at 5-12, and 12, nothing too snazzy. Um, and then Texans 4-13, and 13, you know, they're just not it. Dang, I have a lot similar to you. 
Yeah, I, have, I almost had the same as, as I, I, I'll, I'll go into mine. I have the Titans at 11 and six. I think they're a little bit better than that. They're going to have a full year of Derrick Henry healthy. I think Traylon Burks is going to be a good wide receiver. So I'm mm-hmm. excited to see that. Uh, I got the Colts at nine and eight. Uh, they got some injuries, like you said, but I think the Matt Ryan will help them. I still think that they fall a little bit short of the playoffs because the AFC is so loaded. I think that we'll get into it, but I think that a lot of the AFC West teams are going to make it. Uh, I got the Jaguars at five and 12 as well. Um, I think that they make some improvements, but uh, not they're They're just roster is not talented enough yet. And then I have the Texans at three and 14. I think that uh, it's not going to, it's going to get worse until it gets better in my opinion for the Texans. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm similar. I have the same top two. I got Texans 10 and seven at the top and then I got Colts nine and eight in second. Wait, wait, the Texans or the Titans? <laughs> the Titans. I say Texans. Oh, okay. That's my bad. Yeah. yeah. Tit- Titans at the top. <laughs> Titans, Tennessee Titans uh, at, at the top 10 and seven Colts. At nine and eight, and then I have the Texans in third at five and twelve, and then I have the Jaguars in last at three and fourteen. Yeah, Dev. Um, I'm gonna go from the bottom to the top. I have the Texans at four and thirteen. I think Davis. They're they're not a good team, but I think Davis Mills and Brandon Cooks will get them a few wins. Um. <laughs> Jags are going to improve a little. I have them at six and eleven, and part of that is just because they have like the I think they have the twelfth easiest schedule, so they're kind of in the middle of the pack. I think Travis Etienne is going to have a really good year this year. Um, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I have the Titans at nine and eight. I think the the loss of AJ Brown is going to hurt them more than people think. <laughs> um, obviously, Derrick Henry is going to do Derrick Henry things. I don't think Traylon Burks is going to walk in. And then just be that AJ Brown roll right away. I do like him a lot, though. Um, and then I have the Colts at eleven and six. I, I don't know. I just I just like them. I think they're going to be really good. They have a good O line. Their defense is good. Um, the Darius Leonard injury is a little scary. I don't think it's anything too concerning, but they aren't really talking about it much. So who knows? Um, and then I just think Matt Ryan is gonna is gonna have a good year. So I have them at eleven and six. Colts making or winning the division. And I don't know if nine and eight gets the Titans in the playoffs or not, but we'll see. Um, one one quick thing. Um, here we go. I'm, yeah, come on. There's nothing. Here we go. Here, I'm just I'm just asking. Like, what do you think? What do you think? Like, the biggest problem will be for the Titans, like missing AJ Brown, because I feel like I mean, like he's obviously a really good receiver, but they had him. They didn't have him very many games last year. I mean, he played minimal games and they they seem like they were doing just fine without him so like how, think, how do you think they'll do without him i just think ryan Tannehill is a mid quarterback and i mean that on like the better side of mid i think <laughs> so above average i think Corey davis was a big part of the titans too not gonna lie and i was on the jets and i don't think is robert woods gonna be healthy right away yeah he will yeah, he, he should be yeah I still just – I don't see them – I don't know. I don't know. I don't like them. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> hey, fair enough. All right, Caleb, finish us off. What do you think? So, I, boys, I actually messed up because I thought there was 16 games, but there's 17, so I had to change it up. <laughs> We're good, though. We're good. I got my I got my records. But, all right, so number one winning division is Titans 12-5. and five. Um. And then about right behind them, I have the Colts at 10 and 7. So I have the Titans winning division by games. Then at third place, I have the Jaguars at 5 and 12. I think they'll be better by than last year by a couple of games. And then Texans, I got 2 and 15. <laughs> 2 and 15. I can, I can see it happen, yeah. I think okay. that the Texans are more likely to be 2 and 15 than the Pittsburgh Steelers to be two and fifteen. <laughs> so Trey, Trey, if you didn't two different see schedules, and, two different if schedules. If you didn't see the, the episode we posted today um, about the AFC North, Garrett predicted that the Pittsburgh Steelers would be two and fifteen. I have not had a chance to see, <laughs> to see it yet. That's <laughs> either. Uh, hey, but yeah, I, I was seeing some clips to back up my my claims from yesterday. Um, 
Kenny Pickett was looking trash in, in practice. He's well, throwing Kenny his Pickett. Pickett. Kenny Pickett I mean, is hey, the I starting mean, quarterback, hey, man. It just brings Big the whole ben team morale down. Week. It just brings the whole team morale down. But Mitchell Trubisky <laughs> is going to be better than Big Ben was last year. All right, all right, all right, all right. I agree. We, we, don't need to, we don't need to get in the AFC. Anyways. I'm just saying, I, I, I low-key, I was thinking about it while I was working today. I, real quick, real quick. <laughs> I think they're going to go 500. <laughs> oh, my. Against that no, division? They, they got go. George so Pickens, eight, too. So, 8-8 eight, eight and 1? <laughs> Hey, bro, um, bro, when we, when we with Devin's claim, I don't disagree with that. I feel like Steelers when, when always, we all, not in that always, division. They're Steelers. They, they find a way to win they're, games. They they're, do. They're, they're, they're they tough, man. Mike, Tyler I don't think, I don't think they got worse. I don't think so either. How? Who did? Okay, but tell me who they lost, and I'll tell you who they replaced them with. Ben Roethlisberger. And don't Mr. try Trubisky. to do no, no, don't even no, try. Stop. Right now. Bro, don't you can't tell me. me stop. Right stop. Right Big Ben was so bad the past year. I, I, I still I think, think that he's I tremendously that better than Mitchell Trubisky. Big Ben could well, everybody even throw in their the division ball. got better. You 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 guys, there's been too and much time that has passed since we saw his last season in Chicago. Do you know how bad that was for Mitchell Trubisky? It was bad, man. It was bad. Yeah, I'm just excited to see. Mitchie T under a new coach. We'll see how he does. We will. But let's let's end the uh, the NFL talk for today. Uh, we want to move into another segment. Just we just want you guys to get to know us more. Uh, we just want to have fun with it. So we kind of just wanted to share our top five TV lists. And uh, this part of the program was uh, given to us by Garrett DeVries. So Garrett, start us off. What is your top five TV shows? All right, so all these these all these five shows are just peak. It's just peak fiction. Um, at number one, we have the greatest TV show of all time. No debates. Breaking Bad. I mean, you really can't debate it. Best show, best character development, just best characters. I mean, what more could you ask for? The best show of all time. Number two. We have Daredevil, phenomenal show. Excited to see the new season coming out soon. Um, and at number three, we have The Boys. The Boys, very good TV show. Um, very entertaining. Number four, we got a little spinoff show from Breaking Bad. It's Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, another great TV show in the universe of Breaking Bad. A lot of people are going to agree with me on this. I know it. And then number five, this may be a little recency bias, but I have Stranger Things. Stranger Things, um, you know, it just kept getting better through every single season. I was talking to my uh, talking to my friend about it today, and we were just – you know, reminiscing about 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 season one and how you know how it's grown so much from you know a little show that Netflix put on, and now it's this whole now it's this whole thing. Eddie Munson, you know, the actor for Eddie Munson's playing with playing uh, what is it called, the uh, Master of Puppets on on stage with with Metallica. So yeah, pretty cool. That's my top five, the greatest top That's five. Cool. TV show list of all time. And they have. All right. I will go next. I have uh, at number one, the reality sensation. It has been talked about on this podcast. If you know me, you know how much I am obsessed with this. And that's Big Brother. You can't beat it. You put 16 people that don't know each other into a house and have them compete for $750,000. It is going on right now. If you have not seen it, you need to watch it. Devin Caleb can vouch for it i have gotten them onto it and uh it, it's, it's just it's it's great but, stuff great stuff it's amazing i love it so much it, it's so much fun to watch uh big brother casting if you're watching this i would love to be contestant bring me on i think that i could be a, an amazing <laughs> part of the cast uh it, it would be great I, I would be sad to leave the versus everybody podcast hit up but yeah hit up big brother for matt Put in a good word. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that, that's my only reality show I have. I know it's kind of really like it's a TV show, but it's kind of different. But I get that. I had to put a number one, though. 
At number two, I have The Office. I know that it's just super popular, but ever since I watched it, I absolutely love it. I think I've watched it through at least eight, nine, ten times. Like, it's just so funny. Love all the characters. It's so good. And I'm kind of with Garrett at number three. I It might be recency bias, but I have Stranger Things at number three. I love that TV show. It is a great TV show. It's something that I usually don't like. And maybe it's because it's popular that I do, but the storyline in it, the plot and everything, it gets better and better. Just when you think they don't have anything to do after season three, they come out with an absolute banger of season four. Season four. Um, at number four, a very controversial TV show. I have How I Met Your Mother. Um, mm, terrible cool. ending to the show. Terrible ending, but I, lo- I love that show. I will watch seasons one all the way to, what was it, nine? Oh, was nine? Them. Oh, I thought it was 11. Was it not? Wrong. So whatever the last season is, I will watch until like the last two episodes because even the last season is great until it's the last two episodes. You skip those and you go right wait, back to the Wait, wait, how did it end again? It, what, it was like uh... – So they, you, fi- you find out who the mother is in the, in the last season and it leads up to them finally meeting. And then like the two last two episodes, they finally meet and then like it skips through their whole life and it, she ends up dying and then he ends up getting with – the person that he had been trying to get away from the whole time because she didn't want to be married, didn't want kids, and that's what he always wanted. So it was just a cop-out of an ending, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the terrible thing is that they had that planned since season one. That was their plan the whole time, was to have Robin be the person that he – it was – oh, my gosh. They sold. They they did sell. But besides that, absolutely great TV show. It's one of my favorite moments is when they have the sitcom and they finally bring in something deep with it. Uh, at the passing of Marshall's father. Yeah, it's such an emotional TV show. Spoiler. Yes, me. Yeah, true. <laughs> and then number five, uh, the it, Makers of the Office also made this. It is Parks and Rec. If you have not seen Parks and Rec, <laughs> it does not get the recognition it deserves. It is up there with The Office as good as it is. It's got Chris Pratt. It's got Amy Schuler. Polar. Polar. Amy Polar. Amy Polar. It's got um, – who's the guy that plays Ron Swanson? Absolutely love that guy. Great cast. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. It's got Rob Lowe. Love that show. Um, I just love it so much. That's my that's my list. Trey, let's hear it. All right. Um, all mine are sitcoms because that's, like, about all I watch. Um, number one is New Girl. Um, I think that – Every single character in New Girl is absolutely hilarious. And Great pick. none of them Great have pick. flaws. And Great I will pick. watch that show on repeat. Um, last season is a little bit of a rough spot, but it's all right. Um, I feel like that's a lot of sitcoms. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, number then two. They fell off. Uh, Modern Family. Um, something that I've been watching for a long time. The first one that I got into. I think it's freaking hilarious. Um Phil Dunphy is my absolute favorite, and then he is such a good character. Uh, number three, the classic, an oldie but a goodie, Friends. Um, just can't go wrong. Mac knows that I will watch Friends when I'm bored anytime, <laughs> any, any time of the day. Uh, number four is The Office. Obviously, like everyone said, it's just a classic. Can't go wrong. I was watching it last night with my dad, you know. Good show, good show for the fam. Uh, number five. Uh, this is probably the one I've seen most recently is Brooklyn Nine Nine. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but man, oh. Andy Samberg, go, <laughs> go. He's really good, really good. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's my top five all sitcoms. Hey, there we go. Good stuff, Caleb. Let's hear the top five TV show list. So number one, um, Daredevil, best show in the world. Um, words can't explain how good it is. Uh, two on the list is Psych. Um, it's like a police detective show. I'm sure, many of you have heard of it out there. It's kind of an old TV show. Number three, I got The Office. Um, I want. I had to put that in there. I had to put it in there. It's a crime if I didn't put it in there. Number four, also, I guess this is more of a, a reality show, but Impractical Jokers. Um, I mean, Trey knows this. I watched that show 24 seven. It's just the episodes never get old. They're always funny. And then I'm going to blow you guys out of the water. at Number five. Uh Oh, I'm going to blow you guys out of the water. The best Disney channel show 
ever invented. Good luck, Charlie. <laughs> Good luck, Charlie. Literally okay. amazing stuff. I had to put it in there. I had to put it in there. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's That's not, that is not what I Wait, expected. wait, wait, wait. Kill, kill. Yeah. Over kicking it. Over kicking it. Uh, oh, tough. gosh. Shout out to Olivia Holt. She, you know, <laughs> she's, but if she's watching. I had a no, huge just, crush when I was little. Just she probably is watching. Say, hey, say your piece. She's probably watching right now. Olivia, you were, you were just dropped there gorgeous. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, with, 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 with that, let's go over to Devin. Uh, give us your top five TV show list. Yeah, so, you know, usually they save the best for last, but, you know, you guys save the worst because I don't watch TV shows. Like, 80% of what you guys just said, I haven't watched. So this oh, one's wow. going to be a little iffy. This is going to be, like, from childhood to right now. Like, what I watched the most, what I, like, enjoyed. So, I'm going to go from last to first. Five, this is going to, this might be weird, but I just watch this all the time with my, my mom. I'm going to say <laughs> Chicago Fire and Chicago Med, like, those type of shows. Um, four, Matt has put me on this. I'm going to go Big Brother. It's just so entertaining. <laughs> Matt's got me following Twitter accounts right now. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> It is it is um, not a productive way to live. It is not. No, it's not. Um, third, this one's really I don't know if you consider it a TV show, but I I can't tell you how many times I've watched America's Got Talent with my family. Um and then two. Oh, I definitely mixed the order up, but uh we'll go with it. Two, I got all American on Netflix. I like it a lot. Good show. Good show. <laughs> Yo, and then one, one. Best show ever made, Phineas and Ferb. Oh, bro. Okay, I like it. I like yep, it. Yep. Hey, I respect, respect and Ferb. I respect that. Hey, that's a good <clears throat> list. That's a good list. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that, said, list. with that said, we're going to lead into the end of our episode, and we uh, want to turn uh, to scripture. Uh, it helped us to figure out our name for our podcast, so we wanted to turn to that, so Caleb, I know that you have the verses for us tonight, so go ahead and share your piece. All right, let me pull it up here, boys. I kind of lost it here. All right, um, <clears throat> so the verse that, you know, just I really wanted to share tonight was Hebrews 4.16. It says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy <clears throat> and we will find, oh my gosh, grace to help us when we need it most. Um, I really like this verse um, because it really, you know, whenever you're struggling, whenever you're just like in the time of need, um, it really helps you, you know, it really helps me feel confident that, you know, we can receive God's mercy and find grace in him. Um, whenever, when I am on the way to work and, you know, I'm just stressing out, um, hoping that, you know, the day will go good. I can figure stuff out. Um, this is a good verse that I like to look at just, you know, that will give me confidence in him and help me get through the day. And, uh, yeah. So Hebrews four sixteen. Good. Hey, that's good stuff. Love that. That's good stuff. Well, uh, we uh, just thank you guys once again for listening to this episode of the Versus Podcast. Uh, we are loving what we're doing. We're having so much fun. Uh, we can't wait to be in person with one another. Um, it'll be fun. We, we're loving the NFL uh, talk. We can't wait to be in season and talk about it more. Um, but if you guys could please like this video and subscribe to our channel, we would greatly appreciate it. Everybody, Garrett. leave a comment on who had the best list for TV shows. We want to know, and we will respond on the next podcast. Yes. Also, would love that. Matt already said this, but what division are we doing next? The AFC West. Okay, AFC West. We're going to post it on our Instagram again. Leave a comment. We only got one comment last time. So let's try to up that, you know? We want to yeah, hear from you. you. Thank you to that one comment. Yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Shout out Luke Webb. But um, thank you guys so much. Uh, we just really appreciate it. Um, and we will see y'all in the next one.